Since it first started tumbling into Ireland through the old pirate coves of West Cork and in the stomachs of drug mules coming from Miami, cocaine has become the drug of our nation. It has swept in like a blizzard, dusting every corner of every small town and so swift and total has its spread been that the Irish are now some of the biggest users in the world. But to unravel how a small island like ours on the edge of Europe ended up such a big player in the major cocaine leagues, we must follow the white supply lines back to the beginning. We must follow the routes it has taken as it travels across the globe. And most importantly, we need to follow the cowboys who put us on the map. So join me, Nicola Talent, for my new live show, Cocaine Cowboys, the story of Ireland's love affair with Colombia's biggest export. Limited tickets now available for February 10th at the Lime Tree Theatre in Limerick, February 15th in Cork's Everyman and at Dublin's Three Olympia on Sunday, February 18th. Tickets available at venues are on mcd.ie. A wedding in Bali Magarvi village, a honeymoon in Mexico and a free bar tab. A lot of money. A lot of money. I've yeah. actually been at a wedding in Bali Magarvi village. It's really snazzy. So was I beautiful? Where, yeah, really, yeah. really snazzy yeah. place like venue. Um, you don't hear of these big fancy weddings, but maybe we're at an age. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's more divorce parties. It's more divorce parties. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of them. Yeah. Wow, is all I can say. Yeah. And they're pretty like good fun, actually, you know? Yeah, arguably better fun and cheaper than weddings. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Dean Masterson tied the knot with his long-term sweetheart, Victoria, at Ballymagarvey Village in Meath just before Christmas. And the two of them are presumably still enjoying their honeymoon in Mexico, which they had planned to go to uh, in the new year. Now, uh, it's not everybody who gets married and goes on a honeymoon that ends up on Crime World. But of course, Dean Masterson is a very significant character. He uh, was operating, uh, was suspected of operating as a bagman, essentially, for the Kinahan cartel here. He was the guy who was going around suspected of paying the wages for the cartel as they were sort of stuck out in Dubai, shall we say, and couldn't, um, didn't have anybody else to do it. No, I mean, he's an interesting uh, character with an interesting background. Um, he is another associate of the Kinnahans or pal of the Kinnahans who has, is come out of prison in recent times. Mm. Um, he was served a prison sentence for probably an unusual crime relative to some of the people he was he was hanging around with. Um, it was basically he served a four-year sentence with trees suspended for uh, falsely applying, for applying for a mortgage under false pretenses. Basically, I think it was five uh, counts of using a false instrument, which is basically fake document. documentation. Yeah. Uh, to to get a mortgage for a home in Rathout, so it's unusual. Now, a home he was living in, yeah, in Rathout, and it was five different documents. I think he used for the KBC Bank. Um, he was living in it for a period of time, but he was looking to buy it. The house was raided by yeah. the Criminal Assets Bureau, searched, and it was discovered that that house was owned or was in the name of a builder, uh, a guy called Jerry McGreevy, who is sort of from Newry, but does a lot of work in the South. Big, big builder. Yeah. Um, you may remember the name because he was the guy who was caught up um, in all that messing with the Mansfields and them trying to claw yeah. back their, uh, their, their assets from the receivers. And he was brought in and he bought... Um, a piece of land called Paddy, Paddy Riley's Field out there in in city near City West, and the deal was that he was to buy it for like eight hundred thousand. It was at one point valued at thirty million. This field it was it's obviously you know got development potential on yep. it, but he was to buy it and he was hold to hold it for a period of time. There was deadlines in place that Jim Mansfield Junior was to meet in order to buy it back off him, and he missed them the deadlines. And so Jerry McGreevy, probably rightly so from a business point of view, you know, the deal was off. So he had bought this piece of land, but it all turned a bit nasty and there was various people brought in to try and strong arm um, 
the land off him. Now, McGreevy was interviewed a number of times and has willingly, I think, gone and given interviews and spoken to police about some of these kind of elements of society that he seems to have got caught up in. But um, nonetheless, Masterson was living in a house registered to him in Ratoth. And I tell you that really because um, unfortunately for McGreevy, he found himself in a similar situation in Black Rock when uh, a guy called Nathan Kinsella, uh, former, um, or sorry, convicted member of the Real IRA, was found to be living in a beautiful house he has there worth over a million in his name. And he's been living in that for quite some time. So, yeah, so these are definitely complicated arrangements. Let's put Very it that way. Very yeah. and, and some of the details of the arrangements regarding Paddy Riley's field played out in the special criminal court while Jim Mansfield Jr. was on trial. We heard a lot of details about uh, the how that field was a source of conflict between various uh, figures in the criminal underworld. Um, obviously, um, Jerry McGreevy has... has then reappeared in the Nathan Kinsella case because Nathan Kinsella was also a target uh, for the for for the police um, and of course Dean Masterson Dean Masterson has never been convicted in relation to anything to do with the Kinahan cartel. However, he ultimately did go to prison for this mortgage fraud involving this house in Rathout. Um, Dean Masterson also has a number of convictions for quite serious convictions for robbery and for armed robbery. Robbery. Um, but he was very much uh, prominent in or around um, MGM boxing and MTK Global. Um, he would, you would see him on Twitter um, associating with people who were coming in and out of the gym. A lot of these people who had no involvement in criminality at all, who are boxers. And he seems to have developed a particular uh, close friendship with Christy Kinahan Jr. Mm. Um, we don't hear that much of. We don't hear that much of. However, we don't hear that much of it. Um, we did hear him, of course, once describe himself. Was it in a bi- white collar boxing as I'm too boring that nobody cares about me sort of thing? A bit like yourself, is it? A bit like myself, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Describing yourselves like that. Exactly. You don't do that to yourself. To exactly. To well, around yeah, I'm kindred spirits, except for all the other <laughs> the other organised criminality and all that. But you know, Christy Kinahan Jr. was always, and from 2010, from Operation yes. Shovel, he was on the money laundering side of yes. that business. Daniel Kinahan and was always seen by law enforcement as being on the sort of the more violent, the drug dealing, yes. the murderous aspect of the business. Whereas Kinahan Jr. was sort of the, the underling who was looking after the money. And the suspicion certainly after 2016, when the Kinahans migrated further from Europe out to Dubai, was that, you know, there was a complicated structure in place to have to pay their wages. Yeah. Now, the wages at that point was for management, it was a thousand a week cash. Yeah. And then it went down from there. There was Christmas bonuses. There was summer holiday money. Yeah. I mean, it was like an ordinary, it was essentially working like an ordinary business. But of course, when um, the key individuals were further afield and couldn't travel anymore into Europe or certainly into Ireland, that they had to rely on others. And the Garda's Drug and Organised Crime Bureau in around the 2017-18 mark, of course, a lot of the Kinahan's sort of top command were being mopped up and put into jail because they were being caught left, right and centre and plots to kill and money laundering and various other things. But Masterson was identified as somebody who was travelling out and back to Dubai and was having meetings and was believed to be sort of coordinating the wages pay. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you remember back at that time, actually, as the, the Kinnan cartel came increasingly under that kind of focus, there was a huge amount of money seizures. Um, they had a, a number of people who were solely involved in that collection of money. Many of them come before the court, some of them being convicted. But there, what, there was a series of money seizures, all six figures, big amounts of cash. And it certainly was the suspicion that some of that that money was basically just greasing the wheels of what was going on. Um, and that what happened then was there was a, a credit problem really um, for them. Um, as well, people were going to prison uh, from 
you know, kind of hitmen. Um, and there was, these people still had to be looked after and paid. And that's always been a very important thing for organised crime groups that these, uh, that guys are in prison are, are kept on side and kept happy because obviously they, they pose a big risk. So Dean Masterson was investigated as part of that being looked into. As I said, he never faced any, uh, uh, he was never charged in connection with that, but there was as you said, a cab raid in 2019 on his home and he was ultimately sent behind, uh, sent to prison for, for mortgage fraud. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about his background because he's actually from the north inner city area where his members of his family still live, sort of cheek by jail with the Hutch organisation. So I think it was around that time when the Hutch grouping and the Kinahan grouping came together, which would have been prior to 2010, that he sort of came into the... Friendship, I suppose, of yeah. Christy Kinahan Jr. and whoever else. But he did move out to Spain for a period of time and he was yeah. working as a driver for the Kinahans. Yeah. Um, you know, when I get up there, another level yeah, yeah. or two yeah. up there, you can work as my... Well, actually, no. No, but you mean you put your life in your hands. Driver. <laughs> yeah, to you to give the emotional support. I could be yeah. like an emotional support animal be- while, <laughs> while you have a driver. <laughs> But But I mean, imagine, like, is that so crazy when you think about it? I mean, you're getting, you've got your mates. Well, you see. And then you give them jobs as like your driver or your gardener. Well, the driver is a very very fucked up. Well, a very, but, you know, I suppose to us it sounds like quite a menial job, but I think a driver is a very important part. Yeah, it has to be a very trusted person. Yeah, Yeah. so it's not, it's not. You know where you are. They know where you are. They're, mm. they're, they're, you know, it's watching a, your yeah. So it's a, it, it doesn't. It's not a really a menial job in yeah. those circles. It's an important one. Um, it's basically kind of a, a right hand person. Yeah, and the driver's very trusted. Do position. they offer themselves up? Do you reckon? Do they go? I, I can be your driver if I can just sort of hang out with you, or do they get picked? Well, I don't know. I mean, Dean Masterson, he was definitely, he was visible, very visible on social media at yeah. the time. And it is interesting we hear, we, you know, of all of the mentions we make of Christy Sr. and Christy uh, or, and Daniel, we rarely mention Christy Jr. But in each of the, the law enforcement documents that have become available, um, for example, the, the the Spanish police's investigation under Operation Shovel, or um, the the Americans, the Treasury sanctions. Christie Jr. is put up there just as much as his brother is, and yeah. his and his father. And each of those have detailed him as being um, a, a key figure in the movement of money. Um, there's no doubt he's he's a much uh, less visible presence than, mm-hmm. than Daniel who who embraced the limelight. But there's never been a situation where any any of those law enforcement organisations or even when we're discussing any potential for the Kinnahans to be extradited back to Ireland to face, you know, charges of directing a criminal gang. Christy Jr. is always thrown in there. So he doesn't have the profile in crime world, which he's probably happy, happy about. But Dean Masterson was it was always said that he was that was his key, his key ally was, was Christy Jr. It's kind of unusual and a little bit risky for somebody like Dean Masterson's to have such a public display of spend, of wealth, um, for many reasons. I mean, first of all, you know, he would have been coming from a place where he was, everything was pretty ordinary. He was a pretty ordinary guy. I think he did hold down jobs, actually, proper yeah. jobs in, yeah. his, in his past. And more recently, he was working this milk round. Yeah. Um, whether, you yeah. know, that was at the same time he was being investigated for delivering, <laughs> uh, you know, wages to certain yeah. mob members. You know, perhaps that was a, an ideal cover. Um, certainly that's what was being investigated at the time. But nonetheless, he... I suppose you get swept up in that world, don't you? I mean, Dean Masterson, certainly, if you look back on him in the past, he was a very doting father. Yeah. Um, and it was all about kind of the family with him. And, you know, in more recent times, he's obviously all about the bling. Yeah. And the marriage, the wedding has been very bling. His new partner, um, who he he married there, Bally McGarvey, she's a former model. She was a News of the World model, I think, um, yeah. at one point, which is back in the day. How long is News day. of the World uh, gone? Look, I mean, Ten, a 15 so. years, yeah. 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 15 probably years. A, probably a decade. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, when you look back 
on Dean Masterson and, and a lot of them, they're a very different animal than they are today. You know what I mean? Now it's all about the the, the jewellery, the watches, the fast cars, yeah. the high lifestyle, the spend, the spend, the spend. Um, and while we see it more so abroad, there's not many who stick their head above the parapet to do that here. Yeah. Given the existence of the Criminal Assets Bureau and given his an investigation is still underway into his activities. Yeah, look, he 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 may make the argument that I've I've served my time. I was convicted of an offence, um, and that now I'm out. And I'm well, that's for criminal. But I mean, to, yeah. to 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 claim where you got the money from to pay for this wedding. I mean, you you're the one who has to prove where you legitimately earned it. Um, and the cab are actively still investigating him, trying to identify assets belonging to him. Yeah. And like many cases, it was 2019 when they first searched his properties. It can take years for these cases to come before the courts. And, but and and it does. Um and there, you know, it was said that there was other people there who are uh, also a target of, of CAB and yeah. have been in the past. Uh, in so who was at the wedding? Anyone of interest? Um, I think we certainly well, are aware there were some sort of individuals maybe who'd be known from the Kulak area. Yeah. Um, you know, there was rumours that some of the Finnegans were going to go and, and other kind of well-known figures from the Kinahan cartel. But it's difficult in a place like Ballymagarvey Village to, uh, maybe it's why people choose it for uh, private wedding ceremonies because it's difficult really to um, to keep a close eye on it. Look, we do, we, yeah, exactly. Look, we believe there was one uh, individual there who's faced uh, very serious charges in relation to drugs, who's also a uh, focus of a very contentious cab case. Um, and obviously uh, Dean Masterson um, would have associations in the Finglas area and people that are, are broadly linked to, to, to the Mr. Mm. Flashy Gang. Um, but most likely, like all these weddings, the majority, if not nearly all the people at it, were innocent people who 100%. have no involvement in organised crime or in any sort of crime, no. who were invited to a wedding and who maybe don't even know the background of Dean Masterson and, uh, you know, went along. Just exactly. Yeah, they, they may be friends of his wife, who's obviously no involvement in crime, his new mm. wife. Um, so, but it's interesting, I think, to see that... Um, we had a, a rake of people associated with the Guinnans uh, go behind bars. Yeah. But in, in the last period of time, um, amongst them, Dean Masses and getting out, he's probably had a good while, I'm not sure the exact date, but we've also had people like Liam Brannigan, mm. Dean Howe. And we're going to see a whole series of these people come out over the next period of time and what impact that is going to have on 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 the situation in, in gangland. Um, We'll find out, I suppose. Um, mm. But it is, it is these people, uh, people like Liam Brannigan are very serious criminals and very deeply involved in criminality. And they are now back out and it will have some level mm. of impact. Ugh, have they the strength? You know, well, we'll, few, we'll see. Look, 2024 is going to be an incredibly interesting year for all sorts of reasons. Um, we're going to look to Dubai. We're going to look to the UK. And we're going to look inwards here as well and see if there is an ability to regather, to remaneuver the Kin yeah. the Kinahan organization to the powerhouse it once was. Um we'll see. We'll yeah. certainly we're gonna have plenty to talk about. And my uh, yeah, and an and emotional home. support animal that I am will yeah. be there to to help you through. But I just like to, I mean, how do you have the conversation about do you want to be my driver? Because I have loads of money now and you obviously don't. Well I no, I'd be your driver, but you would not you, I could be your driver. You could. You I could. actually would make quite a good driver. I like driving. Yeah. If somebody bought me a really nice car, yeah. I would be perfectly happy to. Do you know what the other skill them? of a driver, of a gangland driver would be? Somebody to do what they're told. And that would be not one of your highly developed skills at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're going here. No, why don't we go here instead? You know, I I, I, I actually yeah. agree. I'm in total agreement with you there. Yeah. Total agreement, yes. I never had thought that. Yeah. Failed the interview on the first pass. Right, okay. Talk to you later in the week. Thanks, Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.